Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I'm back here at Loki Kia in Clearwater, Florida. And guess what? We're gonna keep the hits coming from Kia, especially with the redesign of this vehicle. This is it. This is a 2023 Kia Sportage, totally redesigned. And I know you might be saying, well, Joe, haven't you already done a jungle green? That's what they call this color, jungle green Sportage? The answer is yes, but this one is a different trim. I brought you the first X-Line, the first drive and look at the X-Line trim. This is near the tippy top. This is the more off-road equivalent of the Sportage called the X-Pro. But we're gonna find out if this compact SUV that's kind of grown a little bit in size since last year really is off-road worthy. Now, let's talk about what's going on here. The Sportage is one of the OGs, the original flavors of Kia, because way back in the early 1990s, they had two cars that they were selling here in the United States, the Sportage and the Kia Sophia. Well, thankfully, Sophia has been laid to rest, but the Sportage is still kicking, and it's interesting because we've gone from a Sportage sort of looking like a Geo Tracker to now a Sportage that really is at the top of its game when it comes to that big contestant of competition in the compact segment of SUVs. Now, of course, we have the Toyota RAV4, and we kind of talked about that with the last one, but Toyota does have a RAV4 TRD off-road. It's not an off-road pro, but it's a TRD off-road. What I want to find out is, is this thing for real? Having the right recipe to be an off-road compact SUV, or is it more of a pretender? So let's go ahead, let's dive in. We're gonna look at some other off-road examples like the RAV4 TRD off-road, and of course that Tucson XRT, which is the sister vehicle to this one, and see really, does it have the goods and is the, this the better one to buy? Let's go ahead, let's get into our jungle green Sportage and find out. So right off the bat, what you're gonna find, like we talked about before, is all new sheet metal. Now some of the things that I think are the best change are gonna be the front end. Let me know what you feel, how you're feeling about the LED daytime running lamps. I think that this is such a signature look and something that is gonna separate it from the rest of the competition. My only question is, how is this gonna age? Five years from now, eight years from now, is this still gonna look fresh? Or are you gonna be like, oh God, what was Kia thinking back in 2023 with the Sportage? That's something I would like to find out from you in that comment section. Now, one thing that I still can't wrap my mind around is why design a thing that looks like a vent, but it's not a vent. So non-functional side vent that could have been a perfect air curtain. But one of the things talking about this being off-road worthy, it does have more ground clearance than any other Sportage. 8.3 inches, that's almost as much as a Subaru Forester. Remember, that would be another competitor to this would be the Subaru Forester. The Subaru Forester has about 8.6, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. This one has a pretty respectable 8.3. Now, as we come across the front, you'll notice that on the X-Pro, we do have a fully functional top portion of the grille that's gloss black. I like the nice aluminum style, especially on the updated Kia badge. And then working your way down all that functionality, you do have flat black. And on the X-Pro, I like the way they hid a pair of fog lamps. So those are LED fog lamps, gonna help illuminate the road or the off-road in front of you, no matter how much sunlight there is. And then you'll notice how they did a simulated style skid plate. I wish that this would have maybe some under belly protection to kind of protect those inner bits like a skid plate. Um, that I think would make it a little bit more off-road worthy. Now, when we get up onto the hood, clean, simple design. Everything goes right towards the eight pillars. And then as we come around the bend, what do we work with wheel and tire? Now, unlike the X-Line, which we already brought to you, that thing had 20 inch wheels. This has smaller wheels. So it's actually a 17 inch wheel. And the reason why they do that is to put the beefy off-road tire. And guess what? This BF Goodrich off-road tire, this Trail Terrain TA is nothing but the business. We got some nice sidewall armor all the way around. I do like the satin flat black look on the wheels. And you'll notice the tread pattern definitely gonna help you get down the off-road 
but it's not too aggressive to where it's gonna make a ton of road noise. Just like the X-Line though, this X-Pro does have the flat black around the fender openings, but let me know what you think, because remember, the X-Line had 19-inch wheels. This has 17-inch wheels, but a beefier tire. It's 235 on the width and a 65 series sidewall, and it does have all-wheel drive. So that's another important thing, just like the Forester, that you wanna look at when you wanna go off-roading. Now, as we go down the side, blacked out, very similar to the X-Line. On the mirror caps with the turn singles, up on the roof to give you that two-tone. You got the raised roof rails, and then the flat black with the flat silver along the bottom. Working our way towards the rear, you'll notice that this is actually about 7.1 inches longer than last year's Sportage. So this is like on the cusp of the compact midsize designation. It's definitely larger. But as we keep working our way towards the rear, I do like the nice finishes that they do and the way that they bring some clean style, especially with that flared out rear fender. You got that long, low roof spoiler with the two-tone treatment, no wiper, just like the Tucson. And then you got your Kia badge, Sportage X-Pro. Little tiny badge, but you know what? It gets the point across. I think one of the things that I'm missing is I would like to see some kind of exhaust, maybe a exhaust tip on both sides instead of this weird textured design but it is flat black and that will definitely help take a beating a lot better but why don't we pop the hood and see what's powering our sportage x pro all right guys we got the hood popped you do have a prop rod but it's clear out of the way when comparing this to the rav4 trd off-road or the subaru forester very close in displacement it's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine so you're looking at 187 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque. Right now, that is the only engine option unless you wanna go hybrid or plug-in electric hybrid. It's made it to an eight-speed automatic, just like the RAV4. The Subaru Forester, though, that has a CVT, so something to think about. Zero to 60, not the fastest. Eight seconds, top speed is 180 miles an hour. MPGs is around 24 in the city, 42 on the highway and you could tow up to 2,500 pounds. And the vehicle with the all-wheel drive basically weighs around 3,800 pounds. Now, I like the idea of naturally aspirated horsepower. It's a little low on acceleration, though. I would like to see just a little bit quicker acceleration, but why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior because I think that's where you're gonna be most surprised by the new Sportage. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Kia Sportage, like I said, this one is the X-Pro. And I know some people wrote in to Rady's Rides fan mail and said, how come you're not doing the X anymore when you did the other Sportage review with the X-Line? Okay, I'm bringing it back. X-Pro, baby. X. Marks the spot. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, does X mark the spot for how much this costs? What is the price? So I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. MSRP... For what you see here, you're looking at $36,795. That's all we'll drive and wait until you see the finishes and the technology. I'm not gonna wait any longer and make you drool. To the door panels, love the nice clean style. Now you're getting soft touch material up top. The open pour wood really gives it a nice nature kind of feel. It's almost like you're out in the middle of the woods, but you're inside and you could be one with nature by rubbing your wood. And then of course you got the silver trim. And this one, compared to the X-Line, has a two-tone style with that off gray color. The bad news though is it still has a ton of gloss black around the switch gear, so I am gonna zonk that. Door pocket, perfect for a couple Nathan's hot dogs right out on the boardwalk at Coney Island. And this one also has the Harman Kardon sound system, so you could jam out like it's 1999 in your 2023 Sportage. Now going from the door panel to the dash, soft touch material, stitch work is great. I like the way they brought a lot of design elements. This gloss black is no big deal because you're not really gonna be touching it. But I like the way they shaped the AC vents. Something different instead of just rectangles and squares. Get ready though, you're gonna be greeted to two 12.3 inch screens. We got our 12.3 inch infotainment system screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff, the navigation. 
We've already showed you all the features. I'll leave the link to the other Sportage review in the back of this one. You got your backup camera, pretty clear. I just wish it was a little bit larger. Maybe somebody has told you that about your infotainment screen size in the car that you have now. I just wish that that was just a little bit larger. But you go right back and there we are. Working your way down, I like the way they brought the technology. This almost has like a Land Rover feel, the way you just touch the actual display and it switches. So I could get into my infotainment settings or I could go back to AC. Of course, we have dual climate with the digital readouts. We got 12 volt, USB-A, USB-C, and wireless charging. We got that F14 Tomcat shifter for the eight-speed automatic. Let me know if you'd rather have a rotary knob or push-button transmission. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, but guess what? No ventilated seats. You gotta step up to prestige. So something to think about if you want your backside nice and cool. We got our drive mode selector knob, and you could lock the center diff. You got hill descent control. They reworked the whole suspension and the all-wheel drive system. Two cup holders, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. You can put your drinks right in there. And then, of course, your standard key fob. Looks good. Remote start, classy. Nice soft touch. Open it up. What are you going to be able to put in there? Easily put all the raffle tickets from all of the Carney games that you played down in Coney Island. And then cash them in. Save them so that when you cash them in, you can get that big, huge teddy bear that your girlfriend wants. That she's been pleading for you to win for her or your boyfriend, whatever, whatever uh, it is that you're going with, but you can have all those tickets right there. Close it up, seats. I like the gray, really gives it a nice classy feel. Great stitching, no electric assist for the passenger. I, of course, have electric assist for the driver, and there's that massive panoramic sunroof. One touch operation, closes right back up, but why don't you get your butt over here? I got another digital screen 12.3 inches that I want to show you. Come on over. Hi right, guys, business time in this Sportage. You do get two memory seat settings. There's your controls, very easy to get to, including that lower lumbar. And then space, like I showed you before, I'm six feet tall, plenty of room in here. Nice steering wheel with the leather, the Kia badge, flat black on the buttons, manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and where you're gonna blow the RAV4 right out of the water is that dash. You're getting not only a 12.3 inch dash, but it's got those clear graphics. You go into the different modes, it changes not only the personality of how this drives, but also what you're looking at. The one thing it doesn't have that you gotta go up to prestige is the corner cameras and a 360 degree camera. That would be a nice touch. Another thing that I'm shocked that it does not have is a forward facing camera. WTF, if you have an off-road vehicle, you need, or a, a vehicle that you say is off-road worthy, you got to have a forward-facing camera. It really saves your bacon, especially over sharp rocks that you can't see. But why don't we go ahead, let's see if your passengers are going to like that you got a Sportage over a RAV4 or a Forester by getting into the backseat of this 2023 Sportage. All right, guys, backseat time in the X-Pro. And what's great is, is that there's plenty of room for you to take the family to Coney Island after you do some off-roading maybe in upstate New York, and then you go down to the uh, boardwalk and the beach for Coney Island. But more room back here than in a RAV4. Backs of the seats, you do have some soft material. The plastic is good, especially if the kids have been eating cotton candy and they got their cotton candy fingerprints all over the place. If there's any trinkets or anything that you won for them or they won for themselves, they can fit in the pocket. You do have USB-Cs, so they can recharge their phones after a busy day videoing and taking pictures and selfies at Coney Island. I got my own pocket here. Of course, you got some backup Twinkies that you could put in here. Easily four Twinkies. You just stand them up vertical, put four across. You got rear AC. And I got plenty of headroom back here. The only thing I don't like is the plastic. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hard plastic. That's not a friend of mine. But I do like the seats. Very comfy, especially watch this. Nice recline. I mean, if I've been at Coney Island all day and I'm exhausted, like I went on the Cyclone 26 times, which I actually did that once, but this would be a perfect place to take a nap after a busy day at Coney Island. Or you could bring it back up because guess what? We got a nice high armrest with two cup holders. Love the way they did the stitching, just like the seats up front. Let's go ahead, 
They say it's class leading cargo space. Let's go find All out. All right, guys, time to get in the cargo area. And guess what? This is where Kia blows the whole category out of the water. You have class leading cargo volume. And it's all because of an extra seven inches. Seven inches transforms into lots and lots of storage space. So what you're greeted to is, like I said, that class leading, it's gonna be 40 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Yes, the seats go down. And I love the way you just pull on the handle. One, two, three. On the driver's side, there is a 12 volt. So when you go to the beach, you could blow up those rafts and stuff for your kids so you don't have to kill your lungs trying to inflate them. And then the seats actually lock into place. Easy peasy, Kia Sportage Jungle Green is the way that they say you gotta go if you're going off-road. Why don't we go ahead, let's take this Sportage for a little bit of a realistic drive of what most people are gonna be using their Sportage for. Let's hit the jungle asphalt and see how it goes. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Kia Sportage, this one being the X-Pro. Still the same engine and the same transmission as the X-Line, but I think one of the biggest differences, obviously, is that increased ground clearance and also how this one has been tuned for more off-road duty, especially with the 17-inch wheels. Now, what I like that I think is well worth it is the dash. Yes, you have a digital dash in the X-Line, but this one, like I showed you earlier, you change the modes, like right now we're in sport mode. I love the graphics, the fonts, the colors. It just changes the whole experience. Having the navigation up so clear, and then obviously, just very, very comfortable. I'm just bummed out that to have ventilated seats, you gotta go up to the prestige trim. I wish that this was equipped with the ventilated seats, but visibility out the front, out the back, and I'm telling you right now, they really worked on sound deadening and the rigidity of the chassis. That's really where the architecture, the global architecture of this chassis really plays, pays a big dividend because of just how nice and strong everything feels, no rattles, you're not getting a bunch of road noise from those off-road BF Goodrich tires. And the steering feel, even in sport mode, is nothing too aggressive, which is great. On top of that, you're gonna get all of the safety features, the Kia DriveWise safety features, which is important. And then you got the great tech, especially with wireless charging and all of the USB ports that are throughout this whole vehicle. But very easy to drive in rush hour traffic or on your off-roading or back-roading commutes as well. Right, let's go ahead and go on throttle. On throttle, here we go. The eight-speed drops down and we are off. Eight-speed shifts very, very smoothly, but I am noticing uh, a buzzy sound coming from that engine. Yes, it's an inline four, but for some reason, I feel like the 2.5 liter that's in the RAV4 TRD off-road is a little bit quieter. Something to think about. That's only when you're going on throttle and really letting the revs climb through the rev range. But other than that, super smooth. And I think that this one's actually a little bit more comfortable because of that off-road tune and the Meteor sidewall tires that you have with the smaller 17 inch wheels. Get out on the highway, cause like I said, I really wanna simulate what a lot of people are gonna use this for, and that's gonna be their daily commute, going to work, picking the kids up, things like that, to really uh, kind of use the vehicle for those daily needs. But as we get onto the highway, just smooth. I mean, you just sit back, and I love the extra room that this has over the previous Sportage, and I do enjoy the layout of all of the uh, knobs, switches, and infotainment system so that you feel comfortable and it's just better organized than in the RAV4. But hopefully this has been a nice overview for you. We're gonna get back to Loki Kia and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day here at Loki Kia. Definitely wanna thank Robert and the whole crew for getting us access to this jungle green 
X-Pro. The only way higher to go would be X-Pro Prestige. But let me know what you think. Has Kia done enough to make this a off-road compact SUV? Would you rather go RAV4 TRD off-road or even the Tucson XRT off-road model? Let me know in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Got to give it up to the rock behind the land. She is the best videographer in the whole YouTube, or YouTube as most people like to call it, universe. Show her some love in that comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.